<laughs> is it really safe to fly anyone out of Wuhan back to the UK, given the severity of the coronavirus? So, Jennifer, would you rather that we didn't, that we left them there? Honestly. Yeah, I think I would. I think they should be quarantined there. I don't think, given it's like a plague, it seems. I don't know the severity or the mortality rate, and does it kill everybody who's affected? I don't know. I think they should stay there. Well, it's not killing everyone affected, no, because it, it, thousands of people have been infected and, and over 100 people have, have died. But no, it certainly hasn't. Otherwise, we'd be looking at about 7,000 people dead, and that would, well, I can't even imagine that. Um, Jeff, leave him there. <laughs> it's quite. I'm really hoping you come to me on this. Um, yeah, it is one of these things that kind of these news stories that, that ticks over. So I'm, I'm going to do the thing that I, when I'm watching Question Time, I often think, you don't know what you're talking about, mate. Let someone else have a go. So I'll keep it really brief and say that. <laughs> I, I'll it really Good brief for you. And say, no one's well, ever said that in my entire yeah. time on Question Time. Yeah, you know what? Do you think we know what we're talking about? No, I just, I'll leave this one to the politicians. I'll just say one good thing, I think, is that, you know, where is this an issue where China has historically sometimes been a bit guarded in this respect, they're sort of being quite open. I think that's yeah. constructive, but I'll let the experts yeah. take over. OK. There's a woman... You're looking quite exercised about it with your pink scarf on. I can't quite understand what's going on because, um, first of all, we're told that there's going to be self-isolation. Secondly, we're told that there's quarantine. Yes, there's going to be a hospital or a facility in the world. Then we're told that they're going to come back by plane together, go in a military building, to which they're going to be together until there's a symptom that appears. And so, and also, what's going to happen in the aeroplane with the air conditioning, when the 200 people come back together? Um, I'm just a bit concerned about these people coming back. Well, in case, in case if there's one infected person on the plane, it will infect that, everybody that, else. That will infect the whole plane. Um, and also, apparently, since um, January... Um, there's 1,200, 1,500 that have actually come back from Japan, uh, from China, um, Huan, and um, only a few have been trackable. So yeah. where are these people, and are the public at risk? I don't know. Well, we haven't had an outbreak yet, have we? But I, I have to. No, but, no. but that's but not I say that it we were. Was Fergus Walsh that was on television staying it, and it was also um, in the papers about the amount. Right. In the newspapers, in the Guardian and the Telegraph. Um, Sasha, should we be flying people back? At, I mean, we've, well, we've seen lots of people on, on, on the news who are desperate to come home, obviously. That, so, on, on that, I'm, I'm not qualified to answer Jennifer's question. What I did find out actually last week, which is a fact I never knew, is Wuhan is actually twinned with Manchester, um, <laughs> which is a, a fact for the evening. <laughs> um, I think the government did a really, really poor job, actually, when, when the news first broke. So there's 9 million people on lockdown. Uh, to give you an idea, Greater Manchester's 2.8 million, Scotland's 5 million. So that puts everything into perspective. And their advice was to get out of the area. When it's under lockdown and there's no public transport and you can't drive and you've got people who are watching on the news, panicking for their lives, Skyping interviews over. How are you supposed to get out? And then I've seen today now there is a plane there and they're looking at bringing... Well, people are coming... People are being flown people back tonight. People flown back uh, to, to the world. But I just think it was um, too little, too late, to be honest. Um, we should have followed the examples of other countries. Right, so we should certainly be flying them back, but maybe more quickly. Yes, the, the woman with the glasses. Hello. Um, I'm a GP locally, and... Um, with regards to the coronavirus, I think the government have done a good job. Um, I've got a brilliant amount of information from them very, very quickly. What I think the problem is, is the press. I think they're scaremongering. I don't think they give the correct information. Um, Let's have some of it now. Let's have some of it now. But obviously, well, yes, hopefully Fergus, my colleague Fergus, is doing a reasonable job. What about what the lady was saying there about everyone coming back on the plane and will, it, will, everyone, will, will they end up infecting each other? I mean, it's an incredibly contagious um, form of a flu virus, essentially, and um, what nobody ever talks about is the military staff and the medical staff, they are likely to be carriers and be going to infect people, but where are they going? Right, there's almost as many questions as we've got answers here. Um, Sarah? Oh, um, I mean, the 150 people are flying back tonight, um, possibly as we speak. Yeah. Was this the right move? Yeah. I mean, again, I, I wouldn't claim to be an expert. I think... The point about China doing the right thing this time is, is absolutely right. They've been much more open. And I think, you know, um, uh, I'm not making a point about Brexit at all. I'm just saying when we leave, we need to make sure we've got those cross-government, cross-country 
working together because actually you know this has no um, uh, borders I think there has been criticism of the government in that they have been a bit slower to act than other countries I think the the information that people have have got has been um, and maybe it's the government's fault maybe it's it's the public health uh, role to, to get that information out but you know are people being screened aren't they are people being brought back aren't they we've all heard interviews on the radio of people who are in Wuhan who are trying to come back who feel like they're on their own and they, they aren't getting the help they need. But do you think it's the right thing to bring them back? I think, that's of course, if, if, if we can, I think the quarantine is, is, is what we're doing right. and that's a sensible approach. Okay. I would say that, um, you know, we, we do public health really well in this country, but there has been a huge cut to the budgets uh, and our diplomatic service is, is at a 20-year low in terms of funding. So the embassy, in, you know, in, in China they'll be struggling uh, with our public health approach, we'll be... We'll be struggling because because we don't have the resources that we once had but I think as a country we tend to be quite good at managing these kind of crises and 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 you know we need, we all need to make sure we're not trying to scaremonger but a lot of flights now have been cancelled coming in and out of the whole of China there's a lot of people in the whole of China that might need to come back and if this escalates quickly we need to know what is the government plan Right, and it's just been declared a global emergency by the World Health Organization tonight. Uh, and Minette, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking from a National Farmers Union perspective, I'm not entirely sure what your, 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 your view on this would be, but, but Jennifer's point was she, you don't feel it is a good idea to fly people back, despite the pleading that we've been hearing over, over the airways over the last few days. Uh, Jennifer, I, look, I, I absolutely sympathise with that, but I think if you or I were out there, we'd probably be pretty desperate to come, okay. to come back. Um, you know, it's, it's a really complex virus. It's a zoonosis, so it can jump from uh, animal to human. And it just shows how different, effectively, China is to here. So this was at a, a wet market in Wuhan where they bring in live animals. So they have snakes, marmots, um, bats. They Very much the feeling is this jumped from a bat to a domestic animal, and that was how it passed on to humans. So I think there are, there are big lessons, actually, to be learned in how these things uh, spread, how these zoonosis viruses spread, how they mutate. Um, and it's a real lesson, I guess, in, in whole, the whole standards piece. You know, China had that horrendous outbreak uh, whereby they had contaminated baby milk and they put 56,000 babies into hospital. And so we've got to, I think, learn from what has happened. And I'm sure the Chinese, the Chinese seem to have reacted really, really quickly to all of this. But they will have big, big lessons to learn on the back of this, that if you have live animals wild animals uh, coming into markets where there is food being sold this is how these things can jump and it's enormously dangerous and now we have you know a global situation on the back of it on the back potentially of one bat and then with this hand up yes this links into exactly what you were saying um, how can the uk and the international community pressurize china into closing down these wet markets that deal in endangered species and cr create these zoonotic viruses which jump species how can we actually pressurise them to close them down and stop it happening again? Because we've had this one, the corona, SARS and avian flu. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the woman here in the, fr in the front with the glasses. Yeah. Just wondering, after the people have been in quarantine for the two weeks, what happens if they caught the virus while they were there within the two weeks? Right. Are they going to be monitored after they've been in quarantine? Right, so James, I'm sure you've been briefed up to the gills on this subject yeah. since the, the flight is going out tonight or has already left uh, with these people. So, so what is going to happen? So 150 people are coming back, uh, 50 from other EU countries. They're going to this place in the Wirral where they're going to stay for two weeks and then what? Well, uh, firstly, the simple answer to your question, Jennifer, is yes, it is absolutely right we bring these people home. We have a responsibility and we are making good on that responsibility. We're lucky in the UK that we have some genuine world-class experts in uh, disease management. Um, and uh, when, um, you know, when these things happen, the people involved in this have done exercises, they've practiced their procedures, they've uh, practiced um, the, the, the GP, uh, the doctor, I didn't catch your name, I do apologize, um, is right. We disseminate information to medical practitioners so they know what to expect, they know the parameters, um, and, the, uh, and the, uh, the isolation that we're putting people into will be designed specifically to make sure that before people are uh, uh, you know, allowed back into wider community, they are no longer 
a, a, a medical risk. These things are done incredibly professionally. And as I say, we should, as a country, be very, very proud that we have got some very experienced practitioners uh, in, in this. And we've exercised uh, um, uh, flu. Uh, we've, we had that um, fantastic response. My mother was from Sierra Leone. We had that fantastic response to uh, Ebola in West Africa that I think we can be incredibly proud of. This is incredibly scary. I, I completely understand that. And it's legitimate that people are worried, but we are global experts in dealing with this kind of thing. And the fact that Chinese have been very open, that they've communicated with the international community, they're sharing information, I think is to their credit and has helped the global medical community deal with what is a very, very concerning so, situation. So what can we all expect to happen now in that it's now a coronavirus now in every region in China. It's now been declared a global emergency by the World Health Organization, which brings with it uh, certain um, procedures that may now follow, such as, for example, stopping all flights to China. Um, you know, extraordinary though that they may sound. What can we expect to follow now? Uh, I, I'm not going to speculate. I don't... Uh, I think we all agree on the panel. I, I don't pretend to know enough about uh, the procedures... No, because in terms and, of government policy. Well, as I say, I, I'm not going to speculate, because this is, where, this is one of these areas where we do have experts, um, medical experts who are experienced, they're practised, um, they, have, they have done ex uh, training exercises uh, around this kind of thing, um, and we will, uh, we will rely on those experts to use the experience that they've, uh, they've got to uh, guide uh, government policy and, uh, and our reaction. But the point I would say is the headlines around these things can be incredibly disconcerting. Um, but we, we are, as I say, amongst the best in the world at dealing with these kind of things.